So do you guys have any questions about the glacier? Why does it look better in cloudy day? Um, because water, whether it's liquid or a solid, it absorbs the long wavelengths of light. And so where the ice is really dense, it forms a crystalline structure and looks a lot like a, or acts like a prism. So the short wave light is, blue is allowed to pass through and reflects back at us. And so where it's very white, sublimation from the sun has melted that dense ice and we then see it looking more like snow. All of the visible colors of the light spectrum are then absorbed and we see it as white on the top. So on a cloudy day, it kind of like acts like a light diffuser or a filter in a way. So if you've ever done much photography, you know that on a sunny day, you can't really take a very good picture unless you have the light diffused. So these clouds just make a really excellent diffuser. So this is the Mendenhall Glacier. It's over 12 miles long. It's receding about 500 to 550 feet a year. As I mentioned, the rocky outcropping to the left, high and low, and also the one to the right were covered in ice when I moved here where there's no vegetation in 2011, where the vegetation starts, the mash, the forest succession started before that. So if you look back and up, you can see the green, the light green moss, and then the dark green is the alder tree taking hold. And then eventually you get the pointy Christmas tree looking tree, which is the spruce and the hemlock thrive in the understory in the shade. Any other questions? You can also see the darker color, which is called glacial till. And so that's all a ground up mountain. And our native bedrock here, that tomalite, has phosphorus, iron, and silica. And so what happens is that ground up mountain, some of it is so fine, it's pulverized so much that it's called glacial silt. The finest of glacial silt is glacial flower. And then it flows to the sea in the glacial outwash plain. And why that's really cool is it's actually feeding the sea. So we have whales in the sea because we have glaciers on land. And we also have the best naturally wild producing Pacific salmon population in the world because they need cold water, which the glacier runoff provides. They also need bioavailable carbon and also um, they need the right amount of oxygen, which the glacier runoff helps provide. And so what's happening is as those minerals flow to the sea, once again, these are also salmon streams. We saw the salmon, the sockeye salmon a little while ago. So those same streams then be returning spawning streams for the salmon when they reach maturity. And all salmon, as you now know, they all die and they're providing valuable nutrition for the land, the watershed and the sea. So what they're doing is they are providing the nutrients such as the phosphor or the uh, the um, nitrogen from their decaying bodies, and so what's happening is the nitrogen, the carbon, the phosphorus, the silica, and the iron um, all are now at the sea, and we mix with up to a 25-foot tidal exchange in just over a six-hour period, 16 to 18 feet on an average day. We also have the trophic cascade of the whales. So these big giant whales spend time all day long tra traveling from the top of the water column down to the bottom of the seabed and back and forth. So they're actually moving more ocean water than the waves on the, the coastline. So they're mixing the depths of the sea to the phototrophic top of the sea where the sunlight penetrates. So how that's important is they're providing um, a mixing of all those minerals and those nutrients so they're not just laying on the bottom of the seafloor. Then we have up to 16 hours of daylight in the summertime. And what happens is the sunlight penetrates those mineral and nutrient rich waters which then photosynthesizes them into life and they become an algal bloom or a phytoplankton or a diatom, the single celled organisms that float in the sea. And we're here because of plankton so I don't know if you thanked your algae today, but they provide over 70% of the Earth's oxygen, up to 72%. And over 72% of the Earth is covered in water. So the plankton is really vital. It's basically like our Amazon rainforest 
and how important that is to human life and life on earth um, only in the sea. So that's why the sea here is green. It's full of all that phytoplankton. And it's the baseline of the food web of the sea. So everything eats it or eats something that eats it. So it feeds the zooplankton. If you were to scoop a teaspoon of water in this North Pacific Sea, you'd have around 100,000 microorganisms, which are animal organisms called zooplankton. So they're a favorite food of everything from little fish all the way up to the whales. So everything here is symbiotic and serves a role because then the salmon come up those streams and return and fertilize everything for posterity, helping the sea as well as the land.